what you're about to see is the full module taken from my paid program where I'll show you the exact process I use to make my reels go viral. This strategy is responsible for generating millions of views for my reels. And with that being said, enjoy it. Before we open our editing software, let me give you some guidance on how to shoot your footage for your reels the right way. So first things first, make sure you have clean lenses on your phone, right? You want to clean them up before every shooting session, okay? Personally, I like to shoot in a darker aesthetic settings. So to do that, select the frame and lower the exposure tiny bit before filming. I also love to apply movement shots. If you look at my videos, almost every single of my reels have these movement shots. And fun fact, I actually don't use any stabilizer to do that. Honestly, all you need to do to achieve those shots, simply hold your phone still like that, right? Whenever you're shooting, just hold it still with your hands. And instead of doing this with your hands, like moving your phone like that, don't do that, okay? Instead, make sure you're moving your body. So let me show you an example. You want to move your body when filming, not your hands, right? So hold your phone really, really still and just slowly, slowly move your body. Later on, I will show you some extra effects you can add to make that footage even more smoother. But before adding those effects, make sure you're shooting the right way. The double shot aesthetics. This is one of my favorite tricks and I use it a lot in my content. Essentially, you want to film the object multiple times from multiple angles and multiple zoom in effects. So you film the object once from the further distance and then you film more shots of the object really closely and then in the moderate distance. And in that way, you have something that looks like this. And once these scenes changes, you're going to have a very nice congruent effect, which hooks people in and makes the audience experience better. My last piece of advice here is to film as much footage as possible. There is no such thing as too much footage. So just film as much as you can. So you're going to have enough footage for multiple reels and you can also recycle that multiple times. The best way to create content for Instagram is to make sure that you're creating content that has been proven to work. You don't want to be reinventing the wheel. I'm not saying to steal content and copy content word by word, but if I can give you one piece of wisdom, do not waste your time trying to make completely original content, especially when you are a brand new creator and you just don't know what you're doing yet. I've seen time and time again, people who are inside my course and not getting results that they want. I asked them to send over their Instagram pages. I have a look and I'm like, okay, where did you come up with that idea? It's either they came up with that idea themselves. So it's completely original concept, never tried before, or they're making something that worked six months ago. Instagram is a forever changing machine, meaning what worked six months ago, not necessarily going to work today. So in this lesson, I compiled three best ways to generate ideas for your reels. And once I show you these, you will never run out of content ideas ever again. So first way to find content ideas is what we call content sniping, okay? The way to do it is first, we gotta do our research and we're gonna find 10 to 15 creators who are creating content that we like. And then we're gonna go over and have a look at their recent posts. Make sure that those posts are not older than 60 days and they have performed dramatically better compared to their other posts. So for example, let's say most of their posts are getting 50K views on average, right? And then there's one that got 500K views. Okay, that means we can use this video as inspiration and create our own video. And the rule of thumb is always make sure that you're remaking that video by using the same audio, the same hook and the same framework. So let's say the video hook was four best exercises to lose belly fat. What you can do is use a hook exercises I wish I knew earlier or these four exercises burned my belly fat. You introduce the hook for three or four seconds and then you introduce the exercises. That is just a plain example of how your thinking process should look like when remaking those videos. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how I do that in real time. But before that, there's a second way to find content ideas and that is to use your Reels tab on your phone. It's kind of like for you page for Reels, okay? Once you're on that tab, just scroll and see what is being recommended to you. So if the video has great metrics, loads of shares, likes, and comments, it means that you can also remake that video. It is being pushed out by the algorithm, which is a good sign that your video could also be pushed out. 
Again, make sure you're using the same audio when remaking that video and also the same framework by adding your own spin just the way I showed you before. Now, the third way to find content ideas more so applies to those that already have some successful reels. So for example, this reel performed really well for me, as you can see, and this reel also performed really well. So what I'm going to do now is what I call mixing. That is advanced strategy that you can also apply yourself. Let's say your favorite creator has multiple reels that went viral. So what you can do is take the idea of the one reel and use the audio from the another reel that went viral. So you're remaking the idea and you're also adding a different audio, which both are proven to work. And this time I'll be doing something that I never shared before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be remaking this video, which is four best businesses to start in 2023. And I'm going to be using a framework of this video, the way I actually structured the video. So as you can see on this video, the hook actually appears for a very long time for like five to six seconds. And then the answer to that hook appears really, really fast, right? First, we hook people in, make them interested. And then we give them answer to that hook, but it switches really fast. So majority of the people are going to be watching the video multiple times. So I'm going to take the hook best businesses start in 2023, and I'm going to mix it up with that other video framework. And on top of that, I'm going to be using a completely different audio this time taken from other creators. So I'm making a completely original reel by mixing all working elements that worked in different videos, the hook, the framework, and the audio. And in the next lesson, I'm also going to share with you some secrets on how you can structure your captions to maximize engagement for your videos. And then we're going to go to making the actual video. Okay. So the first thing I like to do before like starting to even make the video is to prepare the full caption for it. Since I showed you like kind of how I'm going to make the video, right? So I'm going to be using the team general idea of this video. So in this video, we have four best businesses to start in 2023, right? And I'm going to be mixing this video kind of like subject and topic with this video, this video framework and kind of like scenario, right? So instead of me going over and remaking the same video with four best businesses start in 2023, I'm going to use this hook, first of all, to come up with a new hook for the video. If you think about it, there are multiple different hooks you can use to remake this video. You don't necessarily need to make the same hook. For example, you don't need to make four best businesses to start in 2023 part two, right? What you can do is you can make a hook best businesses to start if you're broke. It's the same thing if you think about it, but it's presented in a new way. So now what I can do is I can use this new hook to make a new style of video for that same kind of topic. I hope you guys understand what I mean. And I'm going to be using this video framework to make that video because in this one, we have a hook going on for a longer period of time, it hooks people in longer. And what happens is those answers and those businesses are going to appear really fast, as you can see, which is going to increase your watch time dramatically. Like majority of the people who are just in, in, invested in the video from the start, from the get go, what's going to happen is that you're not going to find, they're not going to see everything at, at the first glance, right? So they're going to be forced to watch multiple times. So it's just, just like a general, generally like very, very great tactic to increase your watch time and make a video go viral. So first thing, as I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have a caption in place and the whole video captions laid down. I kind of like view it as a writing part of the video. So you have writing, which is going to be your caption and it's going to appear as captions on your video. And then you're going to have the actual video. So uh, I'm going to copy the caption that I had on that video, but this time we're going to need more. It's going to be seven. Let me think of three more and let me finish this caption. Let me then just read it for you and show you the actual what is going on behind it. Okay. Okay. I finished with the caption for the post. Let me just go over really quickly and explain you uh, like Me mechanics behind this caption, right? Usually what I like to do in captions is I like to enforce and plan some sort of engagement mechanism in place that's going to boost engagement 
first engagement booster is the hook, which makes people watch the video for essentially for a long time, right? Because they get hooked right off the bat, which gonna increase the watch time because people are gonna be watching the video multiple times. Keep in mind that people also after finish watching the video, they're gonna go and read the caption. And inside the caption, I like to use my caption to maximize the engagement as well. And I like to plant something in the caption. So this time, as you can see, I planted a giveaway for my product right i recently created a free masterclass that reveals the strategies for building a thriving personal brand on instagram comment brand and i'll send you free access this gonna increase the engagement dramatically and let me just show you like an example here 2000 comments right it's insane and at the same time you're building an email list right but for this to work you're gonna need to have your own like your own free product that you're giving away and uh, i would recommend for every single one of you watching to create one just to have it to give away to people and once you're building your personal brand is a good way to actually start collecting emails and testing your offer it doesn't take long to create a free product trust me you can create a free product an ebook a, a a training preset a notion template anything that you can think of just have it so you can start collecting those emails and then not only that it introduces the flywheel right you also can use it to get more engagement on your stories, on your posts, everywhere, right? Because you can have something to give away. It also boosts your trust when you start selling, actually start selling paid products where I'm gonna touch on more about that later on in the course, right? So now, but that being said, I'm gonna go over and show you how I make the video. Okay, so in this one, I'm gonna show you how to lay the foundation. This is the video I'm gonna be using as framework to remake this video's idea. First thing, I'm gonna copy this link and I'm gonna go to download Instagram Reels and I'm gonna go to save insta.app. First things first, make sure you are in the effects panel on the Adobe. And first things first, this is the lesson called laying the foundations. I'm gonna lay the foundations for the new video to come, okay? Let's first just cut places where the scene kinda switches. So it switches right here, right? I'm gonna click the letter C on the keyboard letter C, cut it here and click letter V again. I'm going to go over and cut it here, right here. And then what's going to happen in this particular video, there's no more scene switching right here, but the caption switches, the, the, the caption kind of like the answer to the hook switches one by one. So I'm going to also cut places where the, where the caption switches right here. So I'm going to know where to put my new captions in and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven as we need it. And this is what I call laying the foundations. Quick lesson, how to prepare the video for like your final version for you to edit the video, right? Now in the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how I add my own clips. Yeah, let's go to the next lesson. Okay, so now we're gonna be adding our own videos on that foundation that we just built. In this particular case, I am using an audio that has kind of like a drop a little bit faster than usual. So in this one, um, the audio that has been used has a longer intro for the hook to appear. In this particular audio that I'm gonna be using, the drop starts here, right? These ones should be deleted and these ones should be added here. So the video is gonna be essentially shorter and it represents the answer to the hook a little bit faster than usual. So let's count, so let's say, 35, 15 right here. And it goes over to this place and it's 35, 19. So 35, 15, 35, 19. So four seconds is essentially like a good a good intro. It's not too long, not too short. I feel like user experience and audience gonna like it more because they're gonna see it faster. So most of the time when you're remaking the video from other creators as inspiration, you're gonna be using their audio, right? But once you're remaking your own video, you do not necessarily want to use the same audio again. You can use different audio from mixing it, but essentially t remaking your video idea by taking that different audio from different creator, right? And now it's time for me to start adding those clips over here and adding effects, okay? What I like to do is I always I always have one like essential um, project on Premiere Pro, which I always open up again and again, and it stacks up a lot of new, a lot of clips I can reuse, repurpose from the past. So from other reels that I created in the past, okay? I always like to go over the older clips that I used and I 
hand select some of the clips I'm going to be using for that new video for that new reel. Disc. So for example, this one, I'm probably going to be using for this clip. So I'm just drag it here. This one I would probably be using as well. This one as well. Yeah, let's go over another one. I like to start the video like this that has a caption and stuff with a darker setting so people can actually see the caption right away without any colors in the background that could not be complementary to the caption. So for example, if the caption is white like this, you want to have a little bit darker setting at the start so people can actually see the caption and get hooked, right? You know what? I'm probably going to use the starting of this video with this frame where I'm just sitting in front of my computer. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that my head is a little bit lower right here so I can have a space in the middle for the hook and the caption. So sometimes you're going to need to increase the scale of the video right here and lower down the position like that. So you can actually have that space right here, right? And I'm going to increase the scale as well. So it's going to make zooming. So all the time when you want to make zoom in or zoom out, for example, uh, you have this selected at the starting point here. You select somewhere right here, doesn't matter. And you, for example, if you want to do a zoom in, the zoom in to last and go throughout the whole clip, you increase the scale. So for example, from 100 to 135, and you drag this over till the end. So it's gonna be zooming in like that. And then I'm uh, gonna proceed with other clips. So nothing, uh, yeah, this business is to start when you're broke. You're gonna have the hook right here in the middle. It's gonna be perfectly laid down here. Now I'm gonna go over and start adding more clips. I always like to have a congruent kind of theme when it goes over. So for example, it introduces my setup right here, right? So it goes like that from this to this, and then we're gonna go over and add this clip because it introduces what I have on my desk. Never we have a moving piece. So let me show you just an example, right? So this one is where I move the camera. It's kind of moves like that, right? Whenever you have this moving piece, make sure you have added, make sure you adding extra stabilization effect. So for example, without stabilization, it would look like this. It's kind of almost the same, but that stabilization adds the extra smoothness to your clips. So if you're on Adobe Premiere Pro, just go to effects and enter stab. And it's going to be this one and just drag it over on the clip. I already have it applied, but just drag it over the clip and it automatically going to stabilize the clip and make it look much better. And then we can, I'm going to also add the zoom, like zoomed in the element of the zoomed in element. Okay. So for example, we have the headphones here and the next keyframe, the next shot is a closer look of the headphones and just, you know, from the different side or something. So it incre incre like creates congruency with your clip, right? I always love to apply this type of things in my videos where you have congruency. So for example, in this case would be, you see the monitor, you see them, you see my setup. The next thing goes, what is included in my setup is headphones, right? You see them here. And the next shot is closer look of the headphones. So it has more congruency that way. Yeah, this is where the kind of like a drop comes in to place, right? So it's pretty fast. And those uh, businesses in this case appearing on the screen, right? So for that one, I want again to have more space in the middle. So it's clear for people to read them. And in this case, I want to find something maybe where I sit in front of the computer. So let me just go over all clips and find something like that. Okay, so this is where the middle is where the actual pieces of like captions gonna appear, right? And I wanted this to be zooming in the whole time instead of zooming out. So I'm gonna add that 145 here, as I showed you at the start, and it has the zoom in effect now, like that. And now we have the real almost ready, right? What is left? Um, the color grading captions. And this is what I'm going to show you in the next lesson. 
called color grading. Okay, cool. So this one is probably going to be the shortest lesson because I have it all done for you. Uh, down below this video, you're going to find the preset I use for all these, all these reels. It's a new version. It's not the dark aesthetic preset I give you before in the course. It's a brand new one that I developed myself. First of all, if you are on Adobe Premiere Pro to apply this preset, all you need to do is just go here to the new item, click adjustment layer right here, click OK, drag this adjustment layer on top of your video right here, drag it over. Then you go to Lumetri color and inside creative, you go and click this one and click browse and you select the actual lot that I gave you down below this video that you can download it essentially, right? And you just select it and it's gonna automatically gonna be added to your Adobe Premiere Pro video. So essentially as well, I'm just gonna add a quick notice for everybody that's using CapCut. The same way to add the slot on Adobe Premiere Pro, it's even easier to add it on CapCut. So on CapCut, once you have the video right here, you just go to adjustments, you go to LUT and you click import and you select the LUT that I gave you, okay? So for me that I already have it in this adjustment layer right here, I'm just gonna drag the adjustment layer right here and apply it so it looks like this. If it looks too dark for you, you can always downgrade the intensity of it right here. So you're gonna have it at 100 intensity right here, right? So if it looks too dark and there's too much of it, you can just downgrade the intensity. It looks like this with a lot and this is how it looks without it. This is without a lot and this is with the lot. In the next one, I'm gonna show you how I use uh, Adobe Photoshop to create captions. I'm gonna link you some fonts that I use for my captions. Check it out, don't want the LUT, and check out the next lesson. Okay, so to add the video captions, I always use this uh, preset that I have made for myself in Photoshop. I'm gonna show you how it works, so no worries. We're just gonna open up the sample that I have. And down below this video, I left all the fonts, links to the fonts that I use for my captions, but most of the time I just use area black regular fonts. The cool trick you can always do if you are, for example, on Adobe Photoshop, sorry, on Adobe Premiere Pro, click this export frame button from the original video that you're remaking, export it on your desktop, drag it over to your Adobe Photoshop like that. Make sure it's centered. And just look at the caption that is here. So I can tell that this one is, is with Arial font. Put your own font, put your own saying here, your own caption here. For me, it was best businesses to start if you're broke, right? I'm gonna hold shift. So first things first, I click command T or if you're on Windows, it's control T. And then I'm gonna hold shift, just hold it and drag it like that. And that's how I make my captions essentially in Adobe Photoshop. It's pretty simple. The rule of thumb is that make sure people can read it. Make sure it's readable and, and it's not too long. It's not throughout the entire screen in the middle. So make sure now to like hide all other uh, layers. So it's in the transparent setting and go to file on top and click export as PNG and just export it to your desktop Then open Adobe Premiere Pro again, go back to your desktop and just drag it over. You know what? I'm thinking now I'm going to change the hook to instead of best businesses to start if you're broke to best businesses to start in 2023. Let me see if it's going to be shorter. Yes, it's in fact shorter. So in that case, I can make it this one a little bit bigger and more readable. So just a small adjustment I'm going to make, but which is essentially going to keep the same framework of the video I'm modeling upon, right? And let me just uh, export this once again. Now it's more readable and it's shorter. You want to find that sweet spot when it's not too long, not too short in the middle and hooks people in. And this is where we're going to start introducing that those businesses, right? One by one for these ones, the same thing open up again and change now like this. The first business is going to be going to use this slash. And first one, I think it's personal brand that I wrote. 
personal brand. Make sure it's centered by clicking Ctrl T or, or Command T and just moving it and seeing that it's in the center actually. I hide the black background and make sure it's transparent. Go to File, go to Export and export it and just drag it over here and let me see how it looks. And then one by one, I'm gonna add those businesses like right here that, that I mentioned that I showed you in the caption magic section, right? Like one by one, I'm just gonna add them here. Okay, so once you finished with editing the video and it's fully ready to be uploaded, you need to export it, of course. So in Adobe Premiere Pro, this is some good exporting settings to use to maximize the quality of the video. So you go, for example, click here, click the letter O, and you go to the start somewhere here and you click the letter I. Just drag this over here and drag this over here. Now we go to export. You make the file name. So for example, in this one, best businesses. Location, you select the location where you want this to be rendered. In the preset setting, click preset and select mobile device 2160p 4K. In here, in the video settings, click match source. And then here in range, select source in slash out. Not entire source, not work area, not custom. Source in slash out. Make sure this one is selected. Once you do all of that, just click export. The video is going to be exported. In the next lesson down below, I'm going to show you how to make custom covers. So I'm going to show you how to do that in the next video. Okay. So to make the cover, the way I do it is uh, I like to take the cer certain keyframe of the video. So for example, in this case, I really like this one. And what you want to do is you just want to click this one, export frame, path, you make sure it's on the desktop and click OK. Okay. So this is going to be exported to our desktop right here, right? We have the frame. Now um, open up Adobe Photoshop. So I have this cover sample right here. I'm just going to open up the sample, right? The sample entails the text. By the way, I'm using the, for the text, I'm using Made Mirage font, which you can find as well down below. As well as I said, I linked all the fonts I'm using, but for this specific one, I'm using Made Mirage, okay? So let me just delete all of this. So it's better for you to understand. So I'm just leaving the, this is my last cover I've used, okay? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to desktop I'm going to drag over the keyframe that we just made. Okay. We just have this one. That's it. Then in layer zero, what I have in this layer is a black background at 60% opacity. So once I drag it over here, it, as you can see, makes this a little bit darker. And I always like to have a little bit more darker colors. Maybe, maybe leave it this at 50%. Now, I'm also going to up the text right here and drag it over here. I'm going to make it centered this time. Since this video is about best businesses to start in 2023, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to write best businesses to start in 2023. Okay. Seems like I'm just going to make it white as well. Seems like it's a uh, perfect size. I'm going to select this and highlight this part. I'm going to click this one right here. And I'm going to make this kind of like slashed. And also I'm going to make this made Mirage, not regular, but I'm going to make it bald. And I'm also going to highlight this and make the color my color, the one that I use, this one, the gold one. And I'm gonna, again, use Command T or Control T and decrease the size a little bit like that. Once you can be, uh, so yeah, once, once that's done, just again, go to File, go to Export. It's the same thing, almost the same thing as Premiere Pro, right, exporting. Quick Export to SPNG and then go over, make a name. So for example, cover samples, just a cover. If you are 
a MacBook user and you have an iPhone, you can just use a iDrop to, of course, send this over alongside your reel to your phone. If you don't have it, just use Google Drive. Post this on the Google Drive and just download that thing on your phone again. Make sure you're using Google Drive that case because it's gonna not gonna ruin your quality at all, okay? So this is the cover you have. When posting on Instagram, there's gonna be an option to select the cover when posting. I'm showing you that on the screen right now. So make sure you follow these steps if you want to actually select original covers for your post. And if, if that's something that you want to do, just uh, to mention that it's not necessary. So that's how I create my covers for my videos. All right, so it's time to upload the video. And before we do that, there are some things we have to put in place to make sure that the video is gonna be uploaded at the highest quality possible. First things first, before uploading the video, please go to your Instagram settings, go to data usage, and make sure that upload at the highest quality is selected. I always recommend to have a strong Wi-Fi connection as well before uploading the video. And now a very important part make sure to select the audio just the way I'm showing you right now. So you do not accidentally post the reel with your own original audio, which is gonna decrease your reach dramatically. When you selected the audio, just open up your reel and let it play out till the end before going to the next step. Once the video plays out, you can go to the next step, write your caption, select the cover if you want, or just select a place of the video you want to use as a cover and you're good to go and publish your reel. So if you enjoy this training this is just a tip of the iceberg compared to what we have inside our paid program and for those who might be interested in joining i've included a unique discount link for the program down below this video once you click on it you're going to be directed to the official programs page that looks like this from there simply click join the program and it's going to take you to the discounted checkout process after joining you're going to get instant access to whole program and all bonuses with that being said hope you enjoyed this one and thank you so much for watching